We got into this uh, discussion of uh, lunar TBM because uh, it is very timely. Um, there is commercial interest in a space right now, essentially to go to deep space and also for in situ uh, resource extraction or in situ resource utilization, ISRU. And the goal is to bring uh, water back to the outer space, to the lower orbit of the Earth and uh, use it for fuel as for satellite and also for this deep space mission. In order to establish any operation out there on the moon, we uh, try to make the argument that, first of all, you cannot have surface um, facilities because of all the surface environmental issues, let's say the uh, temperature fluctuation, plus 120 degrees Celsius to minus 190 degrees Celsius, radiation and also impact by meteorites. So it's not feasible to actually put the facilities at the surface for the base. So it leaves us only with one choice to actually have the construction of the base and the areas for living quarters and also probably all the facilities underground by actually mining it underground and having it as a tunnel. And if we are going to do that conventional tunneling the way we do it on the Earth, it's not going to work. We have to actually go with the TBM to be able to automate it and uh, essentially use an automated system. There is proven resources of water on the moon. There has been uh, satellite imaging and remote sensing on the surface of the moon. But uh, one of the more definitive um, measurement was in 2009 when they crashed a satellite into one of the permanently shadowed craters near the moon um, pole. And by creating that impact and splashing, uh, let's say, plume of uh, material that was coming out and analyzing the, that plume, they realized that there is around roughly 6% water in that area uh, embedded as uh, essentially frozen uh, soil. So the, the water vapor gets in a cold trap in the area which is in cryogenic temperatures of let's say minus 180 or 90 degrees Celsius and get cold trap and gets embedded into the soil and that's the water source that we have actually identified on the moon so far. United Launch Alliance, ULA, that actually manages all the uh, space uh, activities for the U.S. essentially uh, launching satellites for all that type of agencies, commercial and uh, government agencies for US, gov uh, U.S., essentially has issued a uh, call for purchasing a kilogram of water at lower Earth orbit, LEO, or geostat Earth orbit, GEO, between three to $5,000 per kilo. And that's the justification for actually mining water on the moon and bringing it back to Earth orbits. That's one, but plus uh, ULA has done a study and their anticipation is that within less than 30 years there would be at about a thousand inhabitants in outer space and 2.7 trillion dollar worth of commerce that is somehow linked directly to space activities, uh, including resources and construction and of course telecommunication and everything else. So that's the whole argument with uh, use of TBM on the moon and it has created a lot of excitement in the community and in a way it's very good because it actually portrays tunneling industry to be very forward thinking and uh, of course the Colorado School of Mines is a fairly well-known mining school and we are the only program uh, in North America that offers master and PhD in underground tunneling, uh, underground construction and tunneling and of course, uh, as of um, fall of last year, we are offering master and PhD in space resource engineering. So we are that perfect uh, position to be to talk about space resources and construction and tunneling. As a matter of fact, we have a center for space resources, and that's the research part. But uh, space resource engineering is the educational part that offers degree master and PhD in experience resource engineering.